Hey everyone, what's happening? Well, today we're going to be talking about linear relations. We're going to be able to define what a dependent variable is, what an independent variable is, what a relation is, and what a linear relation is. We're going to be able to build a graph from an equation, and we're going to be able to turn linear relation patterns into equations. So anytime two quantities are related to each other, we call it a relation. Relations can be represented by pictures, words, tables, graphs, and even equations. So let's take a look at this picture that we have here. Well, we've got four different rectangles, and you'll notice that if we look at each rectangle, we have a number of lines. So right here, we've got six on our first one. On our second one, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can guess that we've got 10 on this next one, and then 12 on our final one. Now in this pattern, the number of rectangles given is related to the perimeter of the rectangle. So in other words, if the rectangle number increases by 1, the perimeter goes up by 2. And let's check that out. So our next one, if we had rectangle 5, well, rectangle 5, and we would have 14 different pieces. So if we write this in a table, all right, we've got rectangle number 1, we've got our perimeter of 6, when we, rectangle number 2, we've got 8, 3, we've got 10, and then 4, we've got 12. You'll notice in our rectangle, we go up by 1 each time. And for our perimeter, we go up by 2 each time. So the perimeter is dependent upon the rectangle number. And that's really important. The perimeter is dependent on the rectangle number. So depending on the rectangle number, the perimeter will be different. So if we wrote this in a graph, well, we've got our x and our y. And we always have our x on the left and y on the right. So we're going to go and do our coordinates. We've got 1 and 6. Then we've got 2 and 8, 3 and 10, and 4 and 12. So we've got our dependent variable on the left, and we've got our independent variable on the bottom. We don't join the points because the pattern requires full squares to be added, not half squares. Now, if we wrote this in equation, we take our difference in our dependent variable and we multiply it by our independent variables. Now if we want to write this as an equation, we're going to take 2 times our independent variable, so we get 2 times n. We're going to add it to something to equal our perimeter. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go 2 times n is, if we put a 1 in for n, we're going to get 2. 2 plus something equals 6. Well, we know that 2 plus 4 equals 6. So this is our number where x equals 0. All right, so you know this from last class. We're going to put a 0 up here, and we find out what number would go to 6, and we're going to get a 4 there. I'd like you to turn the page, please. So our dependent variable the dependent variable is the quantity that depends on the other quantity. Often it's the answer we're looking for. Now the independent variable is the quantity on the horizontal axis. It is usually the number we substitute in, and it's usually the first quantity in the table. Now a linear relation is a relation between two variables that form a straight line. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some following equations and we're going to make a table of values and then we're going to graph it. So when we make a table of values, what, what that means is we're going to substitute in. So 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take x and we're going to put it in our equation and we're going to solve for y. So we have y equals 3 times 1 minus 5. Well, 3 times 1 is 3, minus 5 is negative 2. And then we've got y equals 3 times 2 minus 5. Well, 3 times 2 is 6, minus 5 is 1. And then we've got y equals 3 times 3 minus 5. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 minus 5 is 4. And then we've got y equals 3 times 4 minus 5, and we get 12 minus 5 is 7. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and graph our equation. So we started our x and our y, and so our x is 1, and then we go down 2. And then we've got x is 2, and we go up to 1. And then we go x is 3, and y is 4. And then y, x is 4, y is 7. And you'll notice we get a straight line. We use our table of values, um, each x and y, to make a point. The x is the independent, and it controls the y. Let's try one more. And we're going to start to see a pattern here. So we've got y equals 6 minus 3 times negative 2. Well, we do 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. 6 minus negative 6 is 12. And then we get y equals 6 minus 3 times negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 6 minus negative 3 is 2 negatives equal a positive, and we get 9. And then we have y equals 6 minus 3 times 0. 3 times 0 is 0. 6 minus 0 is 6. And you'll start to see a pattern here. It goes down by 3 each time. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to see a pattern. And we have negative 2 is our x right here. And we go all the way up to 12. And then we have negative 1 and 9. And then we have 0 and 6. Then we have 1 and 3. Then we have 2 and 0. Then we have 3 and negative 3. And then we have 4 and negative 6, and that's way down there. All right, so we're going to connect our dots, and we have a linear relation. All right, and we're going to finish the rest of this in class. Have a good rest of the day.